Hey guys, what's up? I know I am super effing late with this review, but better late than never, right? You know, I told you guys I was going to try to be consistent and I really have been trying to do that. It's just been a little busy for me this week, but nonetheless, I'm getting this episode out before the new one comes on tomorrow. So that's got to count for something, right? All right, so anyway, let's get into my recap and review for The Real Housewives of Atlanta. <gasps> Season 14, episode seven, who gone check on me, boo? Cute, cute, cute. So let's get right into it. And as always, I am Janice or Barb, just do not call me Janice or Barbara, and we good, okay, let's go. So this episode begins where the previous episode left off as usual. The ladies are still around the table we're at Sonia's dinner event and she greets Drew and says, you know, I'm happy you came. And she's like all stroking her hair and stuff. And I was just like, but are you really, Sonia? Like, are you really happy she came? Like, last time I checked, you were unsure if you even wanted to be friends with her. So what is all, what is all this right now? But anyway, so Sonia, um, they all sit down and Sonia brings out her gold medals and she's going to crown the winner of the best steady wine i guess and that was marlo because she did it the best i guess and i'm just like um okay whatever and who was it i think it was drew that said yeah well you don't see candy bringing out her grammys and you don't see candy bringing out her crown so again i got it i get it because you kind of your first season have to make you know you have to come in with a punch and and make a bang and and leave your imprint so that they give you your letter in the mail saying hey can you come back next season so i guess that's what Sonya's doing but i could also see where it's just like okay why was this necessary but anyway drew you know she got pick me vibes and so did i to a degree i can't even lie about that but at the table Sonya decides to strike up the whole Thing between her and Drew conversation and things quickly got heated as we could you know deduce right Drew makes mention that Sonia didn't pay the makeup artist when they were in New York it was Drew's makeup artist I guess it was a $25 little little doot 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 touch up and Sonia didn't pay for it and Sonia responds like okay well did you send me the invoice like don't try to make it seem like I just be running off on stuff like I will pay that over two times okay honey and Drew, to, in my opinion, was making some good points. But before we could even put that to rest, Sonia's mom jumps in and is like, stop making faces and doing shit that you know is going to aggravate her. And I'm just kind of like, okay, see, because we all, you know, I don't want to talk about nobody's mom, but because we always give it to Mama Joyce and stuff, we don't have to give it to you to Sonia's mama too. Like y'all stay out, stay out of this. Like stay out of this. We don't need this. If Drew wanna make some faces, and that's between her and your daughter. Point blank period. I'm sorry I said what I said. And Drew, she throws out this her she's like clout chaser, clout chasing, da da da. And I'm like, I don't really see Sonia as a necessarily a clout chaser, but as I said before, I definitely see her having some pick me tendencies or shall I say more specifically, she's being very strategic about who she forms her alliances with. And I can't really be mad about that with her, but reality TV is a whole different beast. So just be be mindful and definitely look at the full scope of, of things. I, I will tell you that, Sonia. And Sonia responds to this like, I'm a four-time Olympic gold medalist. Put some respect on my name. And I'm just like, okay, all right, okay. I really liked Marlo's wig in this scene, though. I'm not even gonna lie. I really liked her wig. I don't know why. I just did. I want it on my head right now. <laughs> then Drew brings Kenya into it, talking about her having some issues with the whole vibrating panties thing so then candy's like um okay you know she's sticking her guns she's saying you know it wasn't that i i you know i didn't force anybody to do it like 
it was a choice at the end of the day. And I have to agree with that. At first, I was kind of like, uh, I think it's ill placed. Like, why did she do that? But at the end of the day, life is about choices, kind of. And um, Kenya, as well as everybody else there, had a choice whether or not they were going to participate. So, and, and Mama Joy said something real funny at this moment. But anyway, of course, Marla throws some shade in her confessional. And that's pretty much where it ends. Next, we get Marlo. She's with her team down at the Ultimate Women's Expo speaking on her nonprofit organization, which is called Glam It Up. And she's just there to be uplifting and share some of her story. I'm not fam I wasn't familiar with Marlo's nonprofit. I'll tell you guys that right now. But I after hearing about it, I think that's beautiful. And I want I want to see this side of her like not all the other bullshit, man. Like, this is what we want to see. I want to see, I should say. It really is nice seeing her in, in this light and in, in speaking on, you know, just her upbringing, foster care, mentorship, making a difference, you know? And we also, at this time, see Sonia sitting down with her family telling them about the dinner of course and the whole family kind of chimes in and starts ragging on Drew and I was just kind of like okay I guess like again for me Drew is really fucking annoying and is very very like get your story straight girl I, I could see how it could get frustrating and all that like I get it but if you guys don't watch Bondi Blue, you should. She made mention a couple weeks ago in one of her reviews that Drew is harmless and she really is. So it's like for you to get so bothered, is it just because you see her as easy target? Like, I don't know. I think I think that is kind of corny if you ask me. But she's telling them about the dinner and she's saying that she basically used her photo shoot as a means of getting to know the girls better in you know a smaller group a smaller setting because it's hard to know you know five women all together so she that's what she was doing and i was like i mean i get it but was that this is reality tv at the end of the day honey like was that really what you were doing was that was that all of it are you sure because no matter what you have the truest intentions coming across our screens but you are always going to it's always going to get twisted up. You can have the best intentions in the world and you come across America's screen and, and the whole world screen here and we are always going to twist it up. That's just that's just the nature of the game. At that same moment, Drew FaceTimes Marlo. She concluded her speaking engagement down at the Women's Expo. And coincidentally, Drew is working out. And Marlo's like, oh yeah, you dropping it with Drew? Oh, okay, yeah, mm-hmm screaming hollering all that she wants to know what she missed before she got to the dinner and they speak a little bit about that and they're both pretty much baffled by Sonya's behavior and Drew's kind of confused overall about how she even wants to move forward with their friendship so to speak and if I was Drew I would feel the same way too because again not even because you're gonna have you're gonna have issues with, with your friendships that's that's just a way of life However, I feel like Sonia definitely, that was a conversation that could have been offline between just you two, as well as, you know, I'm just completely blindsided. You're just like coming up with all these things and coming at me. Like, yeah, of course, she, Drew's going to feel like some type of way. That's just human nature, if you ask me. So I guess we'll see how this all fizzles out between them in the weeks in the episodes to come but back at Sonya's she's still trying to talk about you know she's still talking about the clout rumor thing and you know she's like you know I am the clout like I have four gold medals and again her her family's also throwing shade at this point and I think her sister even was making fun of Drew's role on the game saying like you know you weren't even Melanie on the game like <sighs> and I'm just like okay see this is this is when it becomes personal and like overly over the top. It's gonna be an issue now once Drew sees this. I wanna see how she reacts to this at the reunion. And 
Marlo at the same time is continuing to shit on Candy and you know saying how she needs to be a better friend and I'm just like okay I'm gonna leave it at that moving right along down at the Chateau Chateau Charay that is her life coach comes by this is a life coach she's we've seen with her working with previously on the previous season and he asks you know how how you been she says she's been better she starts to tell him about how tyrone stared her up and that whole entire story honey and i'm just sitting there like mm, 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 you better say something good you better say something good to this woman right now sir but he does he surprised me he gives her some real advice and says she needs to focus on her on, on on the inside and because he just represented a fantasy you know he, he basically used her from the for the time being which is not anything if you guys have watched these types of scenarios play out before if especially if you've been a part of my channel for a bit now you know i love i love love after lockup life after lockup love during lockup you know i love that and you know that a lot of times people do use people on the outside world as a as an escape as you know something to look forward to if you guys hear my stomach right now i'm sorry i'm starving anyway but again he gives her he gives her the real he, he busted down real good better than i thought he was gonna give her and she says she you know she feels stupid and naive for thinking he loved her and he cared about her and you know the vi overall the vision that he painted for her and i'm just like i mean all you can do is live and learn and, and pick yourself up out of your bootstraps and keep it going honey because as you're again at your big age like you just need to hold your head up and and go find you somebody who can really offer you those things like did you really truly how did you like did you honestly believe it was going to turn out how you wanted it to turn out like i just have a hard time believing that because she knows damn well like even when she's talking about her kids and stuff like that she knows damn well that she would not have wanted her daughters and her kids to be in this type of situation so it's like she knows better and honestly i really don't want to hear too much more about this storyline for the rest of the season like is this going to be what it is for the rest of the season like i because it was stupid at the end of the day like this is a situation she should have never found herself in if you ask me so whatever and she also shares that she's still unsure about how she wants to move forward with him and if she's even going to speak to him again and i'm like i don't know where this uncertainty is lying i don't get it i don't get it he says that she needs to back off pouring into others and i could not agree more because look you've had this brand your brand on on the floor on the ground hasn't been elevated whatsoever in years to the point that you know you're a national mockery when we hear she, uh she by sheree and that's what you should be focused on pour into your brand she says that she's had water bottles and yoga mats and stuff like that but never quite got where you know where it's supposed to be and I'm just like, just then, then redirect yourself into that, please. <clears throat> she also says that she's never going to date another guy in jail. So we're going to hold you to that, Sheree. Okay. Anyway, down at Candy's guest house, they're, you know, they're trying to clean her whole estate. You know, she's going to do some old trash bags of old, old clothes, which, of course, you know, you would think someone celebrity like Candy, you would assume that it wouldn't be like anything too old and tattered right but just because it's not old and tattered doesn't mean that these clothes are not out of fashion right now and and not not trendy so it's her and todd and she decides that she wants to donate her stuff to marlo's foundation they also talk a little bit about her upcoming role which later on we see her actually filming that role in, over in la so then she puts in a call to Marlo to see how she wants to go about donating those things. Like, are you going to come get him? Am I going to have to drop him off to you? Like, what's up? What's up? And Marlo's like, okay, sorry, but no hand-me-downs. Like, I don't want my girls to have to, you know, 
receive hand-me-downs like it's all brand new stuff like that is something that is really important to me and I've built my foundation on those principles and Candy you can tell she's kind of like uh okay then and of course as soon as she goes out this home Todd's like I told you she wasn't gonna want this old shit and it was funny but honestly a lot of people it, this has kind of been a, a topic of conversation I've seen across the blogs all week and stuff and across YouTube and Twitter and all that and at first I was kind of like like really Marlo like there you go being Marlo but upon further review I will say that she wasn't really wrong her delivery probably could have been better she should have really used that time to educate Candy maybe more passively I feel like or gently because her intentions were true and yeah I get it overall because imagine you know you're already in maybe perhaps a dysfunctional environment and just you know thinking you know why me like you know why, why am I in this this situation and already feeling like you know this is not how you would want your life to be in your perfect world right you know and you're so used to getting hand-me-downs and secondhand things and just you know the bare minimum of stuff so of course you'd want to provide these young young ladies with something that makes them special and not them being a second resort you know it's not something that I think is far-fetched and they deserve that just as well as we deserve to walk in stores and purchase something straight off the rack brand new fresh out the box like that's not something that I feel like is asking too much and the right people out there the right donators that understand those principles will in fact donate so it is what it is I don't think she should have taken so much deep-rooted offense though at the same time because again like I said Candy's intentions were true but anyway next we see Sheree and Kenya they meet up at the coffee shop they both look great with day Birkins okay and Kenya says she's been overwhelmed with her business to the point that you know it's it's been suffering and a lot of it had to do with the pandemic you know and how it, it's her bottles come from china so it's been like a whirlwind trying to get those bottles over here on time for her products and whatnot because the shipping delays and all that <clears throat> and she's just like so worried because you know this is a legacy she's trying to leave for her daughter she's trying to leave it for brooklyn which is totally understandable and Shrey tries to empathize and say you know i'm in the same boat because you know i have no team and Kenny also is like, you know, been like a one woman show. And I'm just like, there's no reason for y'all women as successful as you two to not have a supportive team backing you guys on these types of things. Like, there's no reason for it. <clears throat> Kenny is also still sick. And she also speaks on how Marlo was trying to cause issues for her. And she says that you know marl is just maybe she's just incapable of being a good friend you know that's that's just where i'm at with it and shrey luckily accepts kenya's apology and she you know respects it and says you know she she knows that kenya was not trying to be disloyal or not be there for her the, the girl was getting sick okay god we also have flashbacks of Kenya, of Marlo shading Kenya over the years. And she says, you know, she doesn't want to be in that toxic cycle of, of a friendship. And that's, that's the thing, like, you have different friendships with different people, you know? You have different ways that you interact with different people and stuff like that. And some people, yeah, that's just the only way they know how to be there for you or, or to, to serve you as a friend is to give you whatever they have. And in this this case, it's the we fall out we fall back together we fall out we fall back together and tech and it's just it's tired of it and i would be too quite frankly at our you know we are grown af like no one's got time for that it's either you with me or you not <laughs> period they also talk about having girls lunch with all the women 
So next we see Kenya sending out those texts to the girls about the lunch and everybody will be there except for Can Candy because like I said before, she's going to be on set filming in LA at this point. Marlo made some nasty looking pot roast and I can say that because my pot roast is bomb, okay? Let me know in the comments if you ever want to uh, get a cook with me video for my pot roast. Okay, honey. Anyway, down at the lunch, Drew and Sonia arrive first. They greet each other and the awkwardness kind of sets in for a little second. I was like, here we go. Then Marlo comes in and, you know, she says that she's having a rough day. And I can tell because her wig doesn't really look that great, if you ask me. And she says her sister has been having legal troubles and how the judge is recommending her do an inpatient treatment and she wants to just take it to trial and it's just like girl that's not going to be in your best interest so she's really going through it with, with with that right now then kenya walks in again still sick shrey shrey i feel like look really good really good okay they order they sit down at the table marlo of course kicks it off bringing up the hand-me-downs and kenny says girl you know you're doing too much but Marlo is not trying to hear it. Like, she's just not trying to hear it. But again, like I said before, I, I totally can see, I see both sides. I see where it's like, well, you know, these are just my intentions were, were true. These are just gently used items. Like, I just don't get it. That's And then I also see Marlo being like, no, like I want these young ladies to feel special and have something that is, is per was purposely bought for, for them or whatever. Like, I, I totally get that. But of course, this this just makes shit get really started between these two. And at one point, they're going back and forth. And Marlo literally says, like, yeah, just like your wig is off. And when I tell you, I screamed because when Kenya came in, I was kind of like, OK, like, Kenya, I just want you to wear your own hair because it's like nine times out of ten, whenever you put a wig on, like, it looks like that. It looks like you just literally just put it on and sat it there and just, it's not, it don't be right. And I don't want that for you, sis. I don't want that for you. But bottom line is, to Kenya, don't try to be my friend and talk shit about me. And I, you can't be more clear than that if you ask me. If you call yourself my friend, nothing but your supportive comments should be coming out your mouth. Then Candy's brought up. And Marlo shares how she thinks Candy needs to be a better friend with more actions. And I'm like, but isn't this the same woman that you were pretty much begging a couple weeks ago to be a part of your village and have your your have the boys come over there? Like So of course Sheree takes this opportunity to chime in about Candy not being there for her and how she instead helped spread the rumor. And I'm like, okay, again, I get it. But going off of past experiences and stuff like that, like, I feel like Sheree shouldn't have her such high expectations for certain people because that's never been y'all's narrative before this. Okay. So then, of course, Sonya brings up her mommy nation shoot and how, you know, she didn't invite Marlo and Sheree and she's apologetic for that. And a way to make amends for that is that she has an upcoming Nike campaign meeting, whatever, whatever, that she's going to want to bring them along for. So they accept her priest offering and are agreeing to accompany her to this event in Portland. So I guess we'll see that. And then Drew also takes this opportunity to be like, okay, um, well, I wasn't disinvited to the last event as well. So like, you know, what about me? And Sonny's like, you know, this is not that that's this is not that right now. Okay. And so she goes the off to the point that it just this is at the point that literally everything just went left. And Sonny's like, you know, I don't like how you bought up the makeup artist thing and making it seem like, you know, I don't pay my my tabs and stuff like that. And Drew's like, you know, you're phony and unstable. And then Sharank, can you step in to try to pull them apart? And I'm just like cracking the fuck up. And so at one point, Drew's nipple was showing. She's like, yeah, my new nipples. And I'm just like, just don't, don't. 
we're not even gonna take it there because you know what the girls are gonna have something to say about that so let's just leave it at that okay and then she walks out like she's just done at this point drew's just done and sonia was kind of like thinking like okay yeah you're this is you're interacting how you know you have to interact with your husband because you know all he does is gaslight you or whatever she said along those lines and i'm like that could be very well true i'm not even gonna lie i'm not even gonna lie about that i can believe it i can see it and so when drew walks out kenya follows her and she's like you know i thought she thought she was listening and she says you know she just needs to get back on track or, or does she think you know things get back on track with him right now she just like no mm -mm. and i i don't really blame drew honestly i don't really blame drew like if this is how you're gonna like you're not obligated to deal with anybody in life you're not so if she feels like it doesn't serve her purpose to be friend trying to continue to be friends on at this point then they, they just don't need to be friends it's fine whatever who cares but back at the table sonia finishes dividing the ladies and the final scene we get is video is a video chat with marlo her sister and the boys you know and i didn't mention it before but she wanted to put this video call into her sister kind of so she could see the boys and maybe that will stir something in her and kind of just get her in the right headspace to make the right decision on behalf of her her legal issues right now and apparently she didn't receive the call very well at all she threw a chair at the monitor kind of and just like refused to come back and basically blamed marlo for her current situation and marlo gets emotional the boys didn't really they didn't really show those emotions but you know this is not this is this is not something that's ideal obviously probably that they feel for themselves so you know marlo says you know she needs in the impatient and they all hug and embrace and i just felt really bad at that point because what can you really do like all you can really you can't you can't do anything for that person i think she's only in there because of a traffic violation so it's just like i hope that they are able to work that out i really do i really do but y'all this is my recap and review for the Real Housewives of Atlanta. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and hit that notifications bell on your way out, honey. Okay? See you guys in the next one. Bye!